Okay, hello there everybody, welcome aboard. Let's see what we can do. Here goes. Uh, oh, here's your warm up. Hmm. Keep track of the following situation at a table of values and decide whether the relationship is or is not a proportion. Maddie drinks a groschen, which is a potion that is supposed to make her taller. However, it works in reverse. Each day she is half the height that she was the day before. Maddie's currently 58 inches tall. Keep track of her height over time and decide if this is or is not a proportional relationship. Let's go ahead and let's get to it. Guys, you might want to pause the video and then get on there and let's see what we can do. Okay, everybody. Can I get you back up here in five, four, three, two, one. So let's keep track of Maddie's height here. So let's go. I'm going to say that this is days. How many days this has been happening? And this is her height. Now, it's really important, guys, to me that we put the day zero on there. Okay, we're going to put the day zero on there. How tall was Maddie at day zero? 58 inches tall. Now, the next day, she drinks that potion, and she is half the height that she was before. So, Weston, well, how tall would she be then? 20, uh, 29? 29 inches. How many of us got 29 inches for that? Cool, cool. Let's see here. And then let's see. How about Shreya? How tall would she be on day two? That's okay. Yeah, you do 29 divided by 2, and that's... She's got it. Fourteen point five. How many of us got fourteen point five for day two? Let's see here. Let's take her to day three. Uh, Jordan, how tall would you be on day three? Oh, I see what you did. I see what you did there. Uh, oh, I wish I'd done that on purpose. Three point six two five inches. And then divide that by two, day five, 1.8125. Let's just leave it at there. Five at 1.2825. Now, guys, let's take a look at this. So can someone remind me what it means for two relationships to be proportional? What does it mean when two relationships are proportional? Is the relationship between the days and the height a proportion? Well, I'm glad we're talking. Oh, please, Thalia, please. Oh, you're right. 81881. Sorry. 1.8125? Excuse me. I think I just, uh, so 81825. Sorry. But all the same, what does it mean for two relationships to be a proportion? What do you think, Haley? So there's lots of things that can have a pattern. Remember yesterday when, um, um, when Bridget was charging people, that still had a pattern, right? Remember when on that second teacher number, student number, teacher number, it had a pattern. It's just, yes, that's exactly right. It means that you can take these numbers and multiply them by the same number and get all of these values. So if it's a proportion, you should be able to tell me what's called the constant of proportionality. The number that I can do, 0 times that number gives me 58. 1 times that number gives me 29. 2 times that number gives me 14.5. So with that in mind, let's see with your thumbs again. Thumbs up, this is a proportional relationship. Thumbs down, not so much. I got to tell you guys, when I said, is it a proportion to start, I saw one thumb down and everyone else's thumbs were up. I just saw about half of our thumbs turned down. Why did that explanation cause people to turn down their thumbs? Give it a try, and here we go. Thumbs down. Teach. Thumbs down. Ooh.
Okay. Can I get you guys back up here in five, four, three, two, one? You don't know what, though. There was some ways to think about this. One's heavily on heavily conceptual. One is calculatory, and then one is just like, geez, guys, take a look. So L had a really good one that was highly conceptual. L, what is? How did you know that we can't be taking a single number and multiplying these guys to get these guys? Yeah. Four. Yeah. Exactly. If I multiply by a number that is between zero and one, I'm going to make my number smaller. If I multiply by a number that's greater than one, I'm going to make my number bigger. So there's not a single number that you could multiply to get things to be bigger and then later smaller. That doesn't work. That can't happen. There's also someone out there, I didn't, I didn't catch who, but you can check this. Guys, this height right here is what we would call our dependent variable, and our days is our independent variable. If you actually divide them, like 1.8125 divided by 5, 1.8125 divided by 5, it's 0 0.3625. That is... 5 times 0 0.3625 would give me that. What about 3.625 divided by 4? 3.625 divided by 4 is 0 0.90625. So 4 times 0 0.90625 would give me that. Can I just take these numbers and multiply them by the same number to get these ones? Yes or no? No. And that's why it's not proportional. Ruthie had one that was like a, go, duh, guys, look. What was your, well, duh, guys, look explanation? Zero times anything is zero. Yeah. Yeah, zero times anything is zero. So I'm here to tell you guys, if it does not go through the point zero, zero, it is not proportional. It is impossible because zero times anything is zero. Adding, well, that's just it. That's just it. That's not proportional. It's kind of like this. Um... Let's say, let me just draw a card really quick. It's, what if it's like this? Let's see here. A dash. Let's say a dash is, uh, he has a rival next door who always just makes sure he has two more of whatever a dash has. What if the dash has nothing? So there's a dash. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk. A dash and then his rival. The dash is good. So what if a dash has two mirrors in his room? What's his rival have? Okay, what if a dash has one pet dog? How much does rivals have? Three. Well, what if what if a de what if a dash what if a dash is seven dollars in debt? What does rival have? He's he's, he's five dollars in debt. He's five dollars in debt, right? He's five dollars in debt. And then uh, what if what if a dash has is wearing two shoes? He's wearing four shoes. Yeah, so on and so forth. Anyway, here's the point. Does this follow a pattern? Yeah, absolutely it follows a pattern, but it's not proportional because... Yeah, say, say it again, Nathan. Exactly. Two times two is four, but one times two is not three. So that's not a proportion. It has a pattern... It is important, but it's not what we would call a proportion. We're gonna go one, two, three. Jane. The yes, Ev, which means that his his rival has to literally have two of everything, at least. Two of everything, at least. He does you know what? A dash does not have any Corvettes. So he's gonna have to find two Corvettes. He also doesn't have any two really he doesn't have any two he doesn't have two, he doesn't have any nineteen seventy nine Corvettes. He needs two of those. Doesn't have any nineteen seventy eight Corvettes. It's going to need two of those. I have one out. You, a dash doesn't have any Mona Lisas. <laughs> so he's going to have to scare up two of those. <laughs> All right, Jordan. Guys, I can't hear Jordan. Correct. A proportion means this value here, your dependent variable, is this value here multiplied or divided by something every time, no matter what. One, two. Jemima. Jemima. 
Is dependent and independent? On a table, the independent is always on the left, and the dependent's on the right. Or if it's like a horizontal table. Sure, sure. It's kind of like this. I'll tell you on your self-assessment, the two that are story problems, the three story problems, I'll take it either way. I'll, so that whichever one you want to consider the independent is fine. The way that I think about it, though, with the independent variable is it's like this. There's this story here with, uh, with, uh, with Maddie here. Now, guys, if Maddie finds a cure and stops shrinking, will, will the days continue to pass? Yeah. yeah, time won't stop. But if you had a magic remote, like in that Adam Sandler movie, and pause time, would Maddie stop shrinking? Click, I think. If you had a magic remote that could pause time and Maddie was like, I'm shrinking, and you were like, pause, would she stop shrinking? Yeah, yeah. Yes. So that's the thing. Height depends on days. Because if she stops this height misadventure, time doesn't care. It just keeps going. But if you stop the days, she'll stop. She'll stop. But I would, don't stress too much about that. That's more of like a, that's like an eighth grade thing that we're going to get into a little bit. I, I, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit this year. Anyway, underneath all this, got a pencil. Oh, no, sorry, Thalia was next. Thalia. Yeah, you sorry. almost skipped me. Come on. Sorry, go ahead. Anyways, um, well, you said he's going to have to stare up two more rooms to my mind instantly. Like, he's going to have to revive those rooms. It's going to be a problem. It's going to be a problem. Make me a Mona Lisa now. Also, this, you know, I'm just saying, Adesh is one phone call away from ruining this guy's life because it's my understanding, Adesh, I don't think you own anything that's illegal. Right? Oh. Adesh does not have any nuclear bombs. <laughs> so that guy does. Better call the cops on him. Anyway, can I get you in five, four, three, two, one? It's the 57th day of school, guys. You know that 57 can be written as 2 to the 5th plus 5 to the 2nd? See how we just swap the places? It's 2 and 5. Uh, is equal to 57. 57 is a Leyland number. Also, it's learn a new area code day. So, for example, what's what are some common area codes here in Utah? Go for it. 84117. Well, those are zip codes. Area codes. Like you're dialing a phone number. There's 385801. I don't know. Excuse me. I don't know. I know 385801 and 435. So. I'm going to tell you right now, Shh. I'm going to tell you guys right now, if you take 801 and swap the 1 and the 0, you get 810, and the area code for 810 is the southern part of, you know how Michigan kind of makes a glove? It's the, th the bottom part, the southern part of the thumb is 810. This is important, guys, because when you are in college, you're going to meet people from all over the world, and I'm just saying, everybody, let's say you're in college and you're getting the number from your crush, right? Like you're getting their phone number. Like, I, I'm just saying, if a cute guy's giving you his phone number and, you, and you're typing it in as 810, you're going to get major points when you say, oh, hey, Michigan. What part of Michigan are you from? That's cool, right? Now you're more interesting. She's more, he's more likely to remember who you are. That's what I'm saying. He's, he, I don't know. It doesn't matter. Whoever you're into, okay? Like, that's up to you. All right. So. Well, don't say it like that. <laughs> There's, Callie, it's in the delivery, please. Don't be like, oh, Michigan, what's your address up there? <laughs> like, just be like, that's cool. You are from Michigan. And then if they're like, how did you know that's Michigan? You could be like, my, weirdly enough, my math teacher told me that a cute guy might give me a phone number. Like, not that I'm saying, oh, no, now we're in a Hallmark movie. Okay, so moving on, guys. Jeremy, what's our first essential question? Mm -hmm. May we practice identifying relationships? As proportional. Or non-proportional.
And then our second essential question is going to come from Nathan. What is the constant of proportionality How do I calculate it? Okay. All right. Literature, at a total of over 1,100 pages, this trilogy started in 1954, follows a band of adventurers looking to destroy a problematic piece of jewelry. I actually don't see the correct answer up there. Let's see. Ben, do you know what it is? It is Lord of the Rings. Is that what you're going to say, Adam? Yeah, it's Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings. Oh. The problematic piece of jewelry, of course, being the one ring. And then Veterans Day is tomorrow, but that's actually not what I was going for on that one. No, it's tomorrow. Yeah. It's Memorial Day. It's Memorial Day. It's Memorial Day. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. I did it. <laughs> okay. All righty, guys. Come on up here in five, four, Three, two, one. Got a pencil? Absolutely. Today I want to spend just a moment talking to you about the constant of proportionality and then sit you loose on your self-assessment. So if, if a situation is proportional, <clears throat> there's a constant of proportionality, meaning it is the number that you multiply the one value by to get the other. Now, on our tables, guys, we can get that by dividing one, the one value by the other. We did that a bunch yesterday. Do you guys remember doing that? How, like, we had, like, do you guys want to do a quick example? No. no. We'll, 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 let's do it really fast. Okay, so if you have, like, X and Y, and you have, like, I don't know, let's see here. Let's do teacher number, student number real quick. Okay. Let's see here. Callie, can I have a number from you, please? Eight. Eight, so... 8 and negative 20. Let's see if I can get a little one out from Alex. Go ahead. 1, negative 2.5. And then one more from, let's see here. I'd love to get that from, oh, there we go. Uh, uh, oh, that's going to come from Thalia. Oh, what? Give me a number. Negative 13. Negative 13. 32.5. So I'll tell you right now, this is proportional. What is the constant of proportionality? What is the constant of proportionality to Liam? It is negative 2.5. Because 8 times negative 2.5, oh, maybe not in red. 8 times negative 2.5 is negative 20. 1 times negative 2.5 is negative 2.5. And negative 1 times negative 2.5 is positive 32.5. Are you guys okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Now, how about this, guys? I'm going to give you an equation, and my question is, is this proportional? Got a pencil? What if what we're keeping track of is y equals 2x minus 5? Let's find out. So if you're not sure just by looking, I recommend putting a table of values in. And then you just kind of play a game of student number, teacher number, all by yourself. And it'll go something like this. Let's see here. Uh, Haley, give me a number. 28. So that's the first lunchers. I'm not making that mistake again. So 2 times 28 minus 5 is 51. So 28 and 51. Let's see here, guys. How about I get a little bit of help? And this time it's going to come from, let's go to the table C. Adam, give me a number. 92. You guys like high numbers. So 2 times 92 Minus 5. 179. Let's do one more. And I would love to get that from, let's see here. That's going to be uh, Winston. Negative what? Negative 59. Okay. 2 times negative 59 is minus 5. Is that right? That's really fun. Now, guys, is this proportional, yes or no? And you can tell because 51 is 28 times what? Well, 51 divided by 28 
that horrible mess. And then is 179 divided by 92 the same horrible mess? It's close, but is it exactly the same? No, so it's not proportional. So on your, on your, on your self-assessment, on this one, since it was proportional, you would give me its constant of proportionality. And on this one, you would just write, nope. Okay, you write nope. That's right, nope. Nope, nope is the only thing it'll take. Nope, it doesn't matter. You, so if you feel like being weird, you can be like, nope. <laughs> it'll take it. Hi, Lucy. Guys, I can't hear Lucy. It'll be tables, equations, and stories. So between our warm-up, this table, this equation, we've seen them all. So when I say teach, I want you to say, okay, open up your Chromebooks, guys, and work on, let's see here. I don't actually know. What number is that? That's 7.2, proportional or not. 